What do we do for our breath work at sort of five, between those hours of sort of five to seven in the morning when we obviously want to boost our energy and start the day taking it all on guns a blazing? What's the, what's the best method to employ there in terms of breath work? And can we do it? Can I try it now? Yeah. Um, well, again, it, it comes down to what we're working on because like going to the gym, you might say, oh, right now I'm working on my cardio and I'm going to do a cardio workout for my gym session. Or you might say, well, I'm actually going to really work on my legs and I'm going to do lots more legs exercise. So it really depends on what we're looking to achieve. So if it's I'm waking up feeling anxious because I've got a lot going on at work, then it might be using our breath in a way that really calms the nervous system and moves us into this relaxed state of mind, a state of being so that we can go forward in our day feeling in control and relaxed. It might be something deeper that we're working on um, because we're wanting to shift a bit of energy or we're working to release something in our body. It might be something more dynamic. So it really comes down to how we want to feel. But if we're looking at, generally speaking, every in-breath you take switches you on. Heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up. Every out-breath you take switches you off. Heart rate goes down, blood pressure goes down. So we have this interplay of um, our breathing, switching on as we breathe in, sympathetic increases, breathing out, parasympathetic increases. So we can start to play with the ratios of in-breaths and out-breaths to get a good result. Now, something super simple. Okay, go. And it's great, yeah, for something like performance or you're wanting to activate the best or optimal state sorry, physiologically and um, psychologically is something like box breathing. Really simple. I come back to it all the time. Box breathing is breathing in through your nose for a count of four. Hold for four. Out for four. And hold for four. Okay. So what I noticed... And nothing in through breath, my mouth. Nothing through my mouth, just nose. No, this, this practice, we do this a couple of rounds, but why I've stopped is just because I noticed how you were breathing. <laughs> now, everybody Badly. breathes. No, well, hopefully we can switch that. But our breathing is a result of what's happening in our environment. So how you breathe, everyone has their own breathing archetype because of what's happening in their environment, because of habitual patterns of breathing as well. And then also... Um, what's happening in our inner environment because our breathing is linked to energy levels. So if we started exercising, we're going to need more energy. So we're going to breathe a bit more and our heart rate is going to go up. So that's very conscious. But if a tiger came in your room right now, you'd see the threat, you'd hear the roar, your breathing would change to get enough energy to leg it or fight off the tiger, a fight or flight response. So how we're breathing is either triggering one of those responses now, if you, when you take a breath in on that box breath and your chest is moving before your lower belly, which it was for you on, on the video there, <laughs> we want to be using our diaphragm to breathe. because so our diaphragm is a primary breathing muscle and our diaphragm also tells our mind and body that, oh, we're safe, we're in our, a calm state of mind. If we're breathing in our chest, it's more conducive to shorter, it's shallower, it's more conducive to a stressed state of mind. Or busy state of mind. So, so what are you saying? What are you saying, can... Stuart? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's reasons we can be in that chest breathing archetype, chest breather archetype. It can be posture. It can be tight clothing around our waist. It can be um, a period of stress that, or you said, two kids in the morning being on. The breathing has been very on because the mind said, oh, I need to be on right now. I need to be motivated and ready for everything so we're short shallow breathing to give us enough energy for that moment now what happens in the short shallow breathing is carbon dioxide starts to drop because we're breathing faster now if carbon dioxide starts to drop the ph changes in our body because carbon dioxide in water and blood becomes acidic so if we're breathing too fast carbon dioxide drops so our breathing becomes very alkaline and our body doesn't like straying away from 7.35 to 7.45 in terms of pH. So when our pH um, changes and becomes very alkaline, 
over a period of time because of stressful breathing, then the body says, right, we're out of balance here. And it's prioritizing pH, so it holds on to acidity. So instead of peeing it out when you go to the toilet, we actually hold on to acidity. So our organs become more acidic our, and our pH balances in our body. But it balances at this new rate of breathing. So it balances at the new rate of breathing, which might be your chest breath. So all of a sudden, our natural default, because of our stressful period or our busy period, our natural default then becomes a chest breath. So when we try to switch it to something like the diaphragmatic breath or even slowing our breath down, we start to feel like we're not getting enough air. Air hunger kicks in. And this kicks in because the opposite is happening. When we slow our breath down, when we take a, a diaphragmatic breath, the, we're slowing our breath down to carbon dioxide increases a little bit, which becomes acidic. And the brain says, take a breath. Does that all make sense? Quite a lot of yeah, information. Yeah, it makes there. no. It's a lot of information to process, but um, in practical terms, what you're really saying is is that I've clearly got a stressful thing going on, and um, and I'm shallow breathing. Is that correct? In a nutshell, the you you've got a chest dominant breathing pattern, which yeah. is shorter and shallower. That okay. is, in essence, sending an alarm bell to your brain. Okay. So. So how do I overturn it? What we, so what we're going to do now is go back to that box breathing. Yeah. I want you to place both hands on your belly so you can yeah. feel the rise and fall. Yeah. And we're going to breathe in to the hands of the belly through your nose. Yeah. Okay. For a count of four. So feel your belly rise. See your shoulders are still rising up. So just relax your shoulders. Let go. So relax your shoulders. We're breathing in. Try and breathe into your hips. See if you can breathe into your hips. Hold to the top. And then out through your nose. And then hold. And in. And hold. <laughs> I'm laughing because you're laughing yeah. at me. <laughs> So for anyone who's listening and not watching this and can't completely follow, um, it's 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 a maintaining concentration piece for me, which seems to be an issue. But fundamentally, it's because I can see Stuart's reaction to to what I'm to what I'm doing, and he doesn't look like he likes it very much. <laughs> I I I just get excited by it because we can switch it and change it but i need to kind yeah. of jump into the i know right we'll, do it we'll do it another time we'll do it we'll do it another time because i feel like i need much there. more attention in this area it feels like i need much more attention in this area but just going back to yeah, that morning really routine common. piece it, it, it is and going back to that morning routine bit um you, you have spoken about being part of that 5 a.m club which I've, I've said to you i'm definitely part of for all the wrong reasons but how important is setting that morning ritual setting that morning routine in terms of breath work you hear a lot of people talk about that's the time of the day when they best meditate or they best take a moment for themselves and that can't just be a coincidence that has to be because it is also performance related and performance enhancing yeah it is it's the time of the morning before we start our day before we are reactive to the world around us. Everything around us is competing for our attention. As soon as you pick up that device, as soon as the alarm goes off with your phone and it's in your hand, then everything's competing for your attention. Now, if you scroll straight onto your emails or onto your um, social media or anything like that, you're at the mercy of whatever's coming towards you. So taking that time for yourself is so, so key to make sure that you feel grounded and aligned and ready and also prime your your mind is primed because often we can just start our day be reactive to what's going on and all of a sudden our attention's gone somewhere else but our actual main goal like if we're thinking about what is my main goal today is that happening when we're now distracted in all these little things um whether it's uh, it can be so many different things. So taking that time in the morning when our brain is also, when we've just woken up, we're in that alpha state as well. So our brain waves are, are in the alpha state. And in that moment, we can start to reprogram our subconscious mind. So 
alongside breath, you can start to use words or affirmations or even prayer, some people use as a performance tool so that we can really fine tune ourselves before the day starts. So no matter what happens in our day, you already feel solid and grounded and anything can bounce off you. And that's, that's what I feel I get with a morning routine. And I have various morning routines. One where it's like, I've got to just get up and go out, the, get out the door. Um, but it still has those components, a bit of movement, breath work, gratitude, and um, some sort of stillness as well. And just having, having that throughout your morning it's just going to set you up for the for a win for the rest of the day. And especially if you're using the breath with intention around, well, what is the type of breath work that I'm using today? What is the bigger picture that I'm wanting? Am I wanting to be in flow? Are we going to do box breathing? Is it something that you're wanting to really focus on? You can focus on that with your breath practice. And I guess, I mean, one of the things I wanted to sort of touch on with you is that you obviously now are a... Um, uh, uh, have have a total um, knowledge of breath work. But if you're just sort of um, dipping your toe in to this world and you can see clearly there are real advantages to doing that, how long does it take you to stop? Most of us just breathe and subconsciously it just happens and we don't really give it much thought. But if we are then now giving it much more thought, do you go through your day thinking about breathing all of the time or have you got yourself to a point where you just know how to breathe properly given the situation and given the context or the time of the day or whatever that might be and and not give it that thought? Does it just become part of your subconscious? I mean, how does that sort of work itself out? Yeah. Fortunately, I'm not thinking about my breathing all day long. I wouldn't get much done. <laughs> but um, what it takes is a piece around, are my breathing, I, I often look at when I'm working with people, how am I breathing at rest, okay? If I'm sat still at rest, there's no tiger chasing me. There might be tigers in my mind, which means that at rest, my breathing pattern's stressful. So first thing is, how am I breathing at rest? Am I breathing in and out through my nose? Am I using my diaphragm? If I'm not, then I need to retrain myself to breathe at rest in a calm, relaxed, safe breath. So you're telling your body and mind, I'm resting right now. There's no tiger in my room. Because if we're breathing stressfully at rest, then we're not going to sleep properly. We're not going to digest our food properly. We're going to feel tired. We're going to feel wired. Um, so it's really important at rest. That's the first point. Am I breathing okay at rest? What's causing me not to breathe okay at rest? Is it a deeper reason? Is it just a habitual pattern? Is it a stress pattern that's caused me my breathing to change? Is it something deeper that I've been holding on to, like grief or something from childhood? that more therapeutic piece. So figuring out, I'm, I'm understanding, get my breathing to an optimal state at rest. Then we have, well, what am I doing throughout my day? How is my breathing then? Now that might be work, that might be studying, that might be whatever we're doing in, in our day. Ebbing and flowing and understanding. So even just taking time to say, right, I'm going to concentrate to figure out what my breathing, I'm going to be the fly in the wall with my breath. And once we start to notice, oh, I've noticed that I'm typing emails and I'm not breathing. So many people do that. Or I'm noticing that I haven't taken a breath this afternoon. I need to, oh, I need to take a breath. So start to figure out, well, how am I breathing throughout my day? And how far away is it from the optimal breathing state at rest? Because at breathing state at rest, we get all the energy we need. We feel relaxed. We feel calm. We feel energized, focused, um, all these good things. And then it goes up a, a level from there. Well, during the day, then I've got... What am I breathing like when I'm speaking? We talked a little bit about this before coming on. Am I breathing? Am I breathing in and out of my mouth the whole time when I'm speaking? So some people might be working in a sales role, and on the phone all day, or they're speak, 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 ah, big gas of air through the mouth that's triggering a stress response, and seeing the tigers in the room, and then they carry on speaking. So again, throughout the day, can you learn to breathe in through your nose? and speak out through your mouth, like retraining that whole process. The next part is breathing in sleep. A bit trickier because we're asleep, but how am I breathing when I go to sleep at night? My breathing at rest is out, so it kind of goes in that way. My breathing and resting out is out, then it 
you're going to bet that when I'm breathing and sleeping, it's going to be off as well. So making sure that you're breathing correctly when you sleep at night. And then the final thing is the athlete piece. How am I breathing when I go to the gym? How am I breathing when I'm running? How am I breathing when I'm lifting weights? How am I breathing whatever sport or activity you were doing where the energy levels need to be boosted? Am I breathing optimally for that given time? Stuart, are people less sick if they breathe better? 100%. They're less stressed. Less stressed. There's so much. It's, it's less stress on the body when we're breathing more effectively, when we um, slow our breath down as well. It's going to affect everything from our blood pressure, our energy levels, our sleep gets deeper, so we recover, we repair. There's a whole knock-on effect. Um, and then there's, there's obvious obvious um, things like asthma or um, different ailments that have breathing-related functions that when we learn to breathe properly is going to affect those as well. Um, I was picking up and reading excerpts of your book this morning, Breathe In, Breathe Out, which is brilliant because it is really easy to digest. As you say, you can kind of dip in and out of different different sections. And then I stumbled across Exercise 22, which is the question, are you addicted to stress? I thought, well, that's an interesting <laughs> one, actually. Um, and so and my husband and I talk about this a lot because he's a professional athlete. I'm not obviously a professional athlete, but I do le lead a fairly hectic, manic lifestyle. So these are the questions you, you ask me or of me. Do you love a tight deadline? Do you leave things until the last minute? Do you have a difficult time doing nothing? Do you think about work whilst lying on the beach? Do you get FOMO? Do you check your phone whilst you're watching TV? Do you feel as though there's never enough time to get things done? Do you have a to-do list as long as you're on? Do you ever feel as though what you've achieved at work for the day isn't enough? And do you feel as though you're constantly running from one thing to the next? Terrifyingly, every single one of those I can answer with a yes. So there you go. It turns out I am addicted to stress. And what's so interesting about that is your breathing pattern already tells me that. Because your breathing <laughs> I can't pattern hide it from you. Is, that's the problem. You can't. And and that's that's the our breath doesn't lie. And I find that so fascinating because every breathing pattern is for for anybody tells us how somebody's actually feeling or what their brain is perceiving in its current reality. So for and that might be, I mean, we do this naturally. If I came on this call and was going, you're like, oh, are you okay? Have you ran up the stairs? Or can I get you something? So we're already naturally doing that. But when I work with clients or individuals, I really start to go a little bit deeper. Well, why is their breath moving in that way or that way? Because our breath is triggered by our thoughts and it's also triggered by our experiences, both external around us and internal in our mind then our breath becomes this map of how we're actually interacting in our world. So it's fascinating having seen you breathe first and then you saying, am I addicted to stress? Yes, to every single question, because your breathing is mapping that as well. See, we've come full circle. I feel that I've learned a great <laughs> deal today about myself and you too have learned something about me as well. Um, Stuart, thank you so much. It's been fascinating to speak to you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.